Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. Nope. No, no, I'm not. I'm not Rhett. You can you, you can are Jenna. Tell. I am I am Jenna. I've yeah. invited Jenna to be here today. <laughs> Wait, you gotta finish. You gotta say, I'm Jenna. Do you know what to say after I'm that? I'm Jenna. Uh, this, this week. week. On Ear Biscuit. Nope. No. At the, Shoot. At the, this, no, you said the, at the round week, table of dim lighting the, already. So then no, uh, no, I thought I didn't. I, yes, you did. No, I didn't. Okay. That was just your part. This week on the round table of dim lighting. At the round table. At the round table. This week at the round table of dim lighting. We're off to a great start. What? We're going to talk about uh, solo trips, the streamies, GME. Okay. <laughs> you do, so you do know some stuff. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, I invited Jenna to join me here to keep me a little company. Um, I've been going solo a lot lately, and, you know, I'm just not in the mood. So thank you for hanging out with me. How does it feel yeah. to be in Rhett's seat? Rhett's still sick as of this recording, so. Mm -hmm. it, it feels very weird. I feel very short. Uh Everything, uh, yeah. He, I yeah. feel taller. Yeah, you, you in camera look, uh, look much taller. Next, yeah, you look like you are six feet, which you are, and I look like I am five three, which I am. So okay, well, let's yeah. just be ourselves. Yeah, we're just gonna be ourselves. Um, at Good Mythical Evening, well, there was a certain point where he was making out with a sex doll, and then I was, I don't, I was the one who suggested that he go first, and then I realized. He told me that he was feeling sick. And so that's why, if you watch Good Mythical Evening, I was like, you know what? I am not going to make out with this sex doll after you. That That's my standard. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get sick off of my friend via a sex doll. Yeah, if he wasn't feeling sick, you would have gone after. I, well, yeah, <laughs> I would have gone after it. Mm -hmm, I would have mm -hmm. totally gone after it. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for using those terms. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, the great thing about Good Mythical Evening is that it's live, it's chaotic. First of all, I had a great time. If you if you were watching or if you watched it later on video on demand, uh, I don't even think it's available anymore. So you have to wait until the next one. Assuming we do a next one, I don't. That's not an announcement. I don't know if there is going to be a next one, but I hope so because. I tend to have a good time. <laughs> you do, yes. But I I was really happy about Good Mythical Evening this year because it um are you all right? See, I'm like, already ruining things. What are you what are you doing? <laughs> I ah. took I sipped things the wrong way. I'm already ruining the show. Well, I wouldn't say you're ruining it, but it is quite a distraction. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, you're talking about Good Mythical Evening. Uh-huh. <laughs> and now it's coming out your eyes. <laughs> coming out my eyeballs. You're like left eyes. <laughs> Try not to cry. Don't do that. Don't make it worse. Don't make it worse. <laughs> don't make it worse. Maybe drink more. I don't know. Do you, should, you, should you chase it uh, down? I'll switch with, to water. It's it's the tea. It's it's definitely the cinnamon. I When I get up in the morning, I immediately drink water, and then I go downstairs, and I take my pills. And eat, it doesn't matter how many pill, how much water I've drunk. When I take my pills, and then I'm on my – then I walk the dogs. And as I'm walking the dogs, I realize, like, the pills are, like, here. They're, like, under my sternum. It's yeah. like, what the, how am I, what, what do I need to do? I take the pills in my mouth, and I swirl them around. This is weird. And then I swallow them. What, what else can I, can I do? I mean, I don't know how to lube up the esophagus any more than I have. Should, do you do, take them all at once? Well, it's, it's two wellness pills and then a little anxiety pill. Okay, cause, well, I had a friend in high school who um, got a pi like swallowed pills and didn't use enough water, and one got lodged in her throat, uh -uh. and then she like got really, really ill, and <laughs> so um, just use a just drink water. She, what kind of ill? Like grumpy? Um, no, like it got lodged and like her lymph nodes started to swell, and um, she was out sick for like. Weeks, I think. Was it in a tonsil or was it in the uh, the esophagus? No, I think it, I think it got stuck like in a tonsil. Or it something. must have been back there. Yeah, but it, you know, it didn't hit. If it hits the esophagus, 
it's you're gonna know it. Yeah, because yeah. I can feel that thing. I mean, if it, you feel it moving down. You yeah. gotta be in touch mm-hmm. with your body a little bit better than your friend was. I Listen, mean, it, 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 she you, she was doing the best she could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've turned. I've made this her fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is your friend's fault. You got. I mean, I. I'm just gonna say. I really do think it's her fault. If you you go to the doctor and you oh well you know there's a pill lodged behind your tonsil, and you know I don't have tonsils, but back when I did, I knew if something was lodged in them. Trust me. That's why I got them removed. Uh, that's hard to imagine. I mean, yeah. God, mm-hmm. did it. That is disturbing. Yes. Yeah. So, and it doesn't actually help me at all. Well, it which just... Which is w- kind of what I was asking for, was help. I, you give me an my, anecdote that now I'm going <laughs> to fixate on. Even I'm going to obsess even more about these pills. Yes. I mean, I'm... A, I've, you get to do what I do now. I, I don't, drink way too much water with my pills because I'm constantly thinking about what if one gets stuck. I, as, I started <laughs> drinking more and more. <laughs> When I when I wake up, like I've got the, of course I got the tall thing of water right by my bed. Mm-hmm. I take it to the bathroom. I'm drinking constantly. I'm like, you know what? This I'm a I'm a totally get everything, just slick, and ready for some pills. <laughs> but the pills are so sticky. I guess I don't know. It's like maybe I need a new pill. Maybe I need to take them one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. And then just like a big gulp. But then what I do is, I'm like, you know what? My coffee, great chaser. Yeah. So I drink my pills with my water Then I and I make, while I'm making my coffee. Then I take my coffee out and I, I string up the dogs and I'm, I walk with my coffee, as I've said before. So I think the heat from the coffee is supposed to like, even though it's stuck here, then I imagine and can feel... I think I can feel the coffee melting it. So, like, all the all the drugs and vitamins that I need are n- now being dispensed from my esophagus. Along it's like with a the time caffeine. release. Yeah, along with the caffeine. Yeah, so I maybe, like that. Maybe this isn't a bad system. I don't think it's a bad system. You might just need to switch to one at a time and see how you I feel. I mean, I don't feel ill or yeah. anything. I'm sorry to make you fixate on it, but now you get to fixate on something that I also fixate on. So we are now um, joined. You're going to think about that every morning now. Oh, gosh. What if? I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't, <laughs> it, it, that, I don't like this power that you're wielding. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> of planting. I mean, that is a power. Planting fixations in my mind. <laughs> It's like you're building a a downward spiral staircase. No, in, in, into <laughs> obsession. Thanks, Jenna. This is a really yeah. good choice. Hey, go know. back. Go back to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why you don't have me up here because I have uh, ridiculous stories that will make you question everything. <laughs> but I felt particularly good about Good Mythical Evening this year because. And as I tweeted after, I was like, I had a blast. And you know what? I feel like it was the best one. Credit to the team for, like, creating this playground where we can... It's a, as I've said, they create Good Mythical Evening as a safe space for us to let loose. Mm-hmm. But, and here's the... I had a realization when we watched... You know, i I gotten some feedback, you know, like, from... Uh, from people at work that are like, hey, we're, you know, maybe we need to, we need to work on the pacing. There's, you know, it's like, we don't get bogged down in any one thing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, I don't want to go too off the rails. Cause then if the con, if the show goes off the rails too much, then we're not making a good show. So, but it's been an interesting journey to, f- to try to find that balance. And the thing that helped tip the scales for me is we had a mythical society react and we do those on the Mythical Society. We'll, like, watch old videos. But they played the first Good Mythical Morning, like a, the scene from that with Brittany the sex doll. Oh, and Good like, Mythical Evening? Yeah, yeah, Good Mythical Evening. And um, so we were reacting to it, and I just, I, I was very critical of just the meandering nature of it. So I'm like, I want to dial it in just enough where I'm having the same amount of fun, but I'm not getting obsessed about, the equity of nipple clamp placements. 
that was Good Mythical Evening 2. Mm-hmm. So I actually felt like the adjustment was made. We were at a nice, happy balance this year for the first year. Third time's a charm. At least that's how I felt. Yeah. And and I think I've I've gotten feedback from Mythical Beast and from Crew. And I, I feel like I feel like there's a good consensus there. Mm-hmm. So I, w- I was happy with it. Yeah, I had I had fun. I was in it for a very brief moment. <laughs> then I wasn't but like I Oh yeah, you were uh you were gonna be in the song? No, I was going uh I I've I was been, with Emily. I did. <laughs> Oh right! <laughs> that, you were you had a you had a dramatic reveal, I had a very dramatic reveal so, that I did not expect. <laughs> I mean, that was crazy. Yeah, I love. I, I selfishly, I love the fact that a highlight of the evening <laughs> didn't involve me or Rhett directly. Yeah, you know, it's it's nice to spread the 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 love a little bit. Things still went off the rails. It's this nice year, for just somebody else to fall flat on their face besides <laughs> me for people to be talking about. <laughs> But I mean, if you don't know, we had this. We had a segment. It, it was a. It was a the pain hole. We brought back the pain hole. You put your face through it, and instead of Rhett and I doing it, we got crew members who willingly volunteered to behind the wall. Either something pleasurable or painful was happening to them. We had to look at the reaction on their face in order to decide were they experiencing pain or pleasure, and it was going swimmingly. I had a great conversation with Jordan Myrick while yeah. she was in while they were in the pain hall. Mm-hmm. Um and uh Matt Lieb and then was it Emily after Matt? I think so. it, it gets I a little was, fuzzy. Yeah. I think it was I'm Emily after somebody. Jordan. I think Matt okay. was first. Matt Lieb, mm-hmm. then Jordan Myrick, and mm-hmm. then so Emily shows up third and she her face goes through the pain hole. We're like, hey, Emily. She's like, is this live? And I'm like, I'm to- told that it is. And then all of a sudden, she's like standing up. And I could kind of tell that she was like trying to get her boob. I mean, she had a shirt on. Yes, she did. So, and it, uh-huh. her, her shirted boob uh-huh. through the pain hole. Uh-huh. And she brings down the entire set. The thing just like... F- just bloop flat, flat on the ground uh-huh. with her stuck to it, basically. Yeah. And Michaela and I were behind. And that's your dramatic reveal. Like, yeah. I could, I could, I've seen the images. I've, I've, <laughs> I've definitely rewatched that clip many times of the shot on your face. And I, I don't know. What was, well, first of all, at that point, I'll say what I was thinking. And then I'm curious what you were thinking. But then also what was actually planned because I didn't know. Oh, yeah. At the point Didn't. where slam, everything goes down, I was just thoroughly amused. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Like, it was, I was, I was shocked. But, and I told Emily this when I walked over there immediately after the show was over because I, I wanted to talk to her about it and uh, reassure her that it was an excellent thing that happened. But the and what I told her is what I thought in the moment, which was, "Wow, that was amazing!" And that, if you did that on purpose, that was a great choice. And I didn't know. I didn't know if she did it on purpose or if it was like a complete accident or somewhere in the middle. I, you know, sometimes when I do things, I can't even explain how much of it is an accident or or there's some form of calculation. I think that it was an accident completely. Yes. Based on when I saw her, the fact that she was trying to deal with the fact that like, okay, how do people take this? Yeah, we had we had been consoling her. She I'm really glad you came in and <laughs> were just so adamant that it was wonderful because it she was wonderful. she she was mortified and thought she was gonna get fired and <laughs> was like <laughs> <laughs> I think she'll be okay with me saying all this because <laughs> we've talked I, about it so much. I said some of it on the show on, in, yeah. in, in, in the more, yeah. in the Good Mythical Evening more. Yeah, because you just showed up in between the end of the main show and there, there was like yeah, a seven-minute like, break before yeah. the more and you ran well, she was, all the way across the studio. She was hiding at the, yeah. At yeah, the we were hiding. <laughs> It was hilarious. I'm so glad, I'm so glad you came in though. I was like, though, why are you? I was like, like wait. I was like, I already knew she was okay. Yeah. But I was like, you're okay. She was like, yes, I'm okay. I was like, then why are you? 
what are you concerned about? And it was awesome. Mm-hmm. I was like, get over it. It was awesome. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I ended up having to tell. I was like, I didn't come over here just to make this about you. I kind of came over here to get compliments from me. <laughs> How did I do, <laughs> Emily? No, but uh, that was a that was an amazing moment. And I, yeah, I just love the fact that it it's the perfect environment for that type of stuff to happen. So when it does, you can, you kind of hope things like that happen. Mm-hmm. That's like a, a the right amount of chaos. I love it. But what was supposed to happen? Oh, yeah, what was... Pain or pleasure? Um, what were you doing back then? Well, that was interesting. See, I wasn't sure if we were supposed to be... Because, okay, so Michaela and I were going to be biting Emily's fingers. <laughs> which, for me, I was like, that well, could supposed- be pain or pleasure. For you- So, like, I feel like that's not... What? It depends on how hard you're biting. Listen, it's, it's not GME anymore. I don't have to go into things. <laughs> it's not September yet. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I can't ask. You can, you can, you can ask. But yeah, I, I was like... Jenna's into having her fingers gently bit. Yes. Is what... Gentle biting is acceptable. Yes. But, but the fingers specifically? I'm not looking at your fingers for gnaw marks. Don't, yeah, don't, don't do that to me. I mean, yeah, I don't. Ju- I, I, <laughs> don't bite my fingers. I'm, what? No, I'm not going to no, do it. Yeah, of course not. I, I've gnawed my own fingernails for years. You find that comforting and you enjoy it? Okay. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I did. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think it was supposed to be pain. Though. I think it was supposed to be pain. Yeah, but it was one of those where I was like, I <laughs> So you didn't even get a finger in your mouth. I did not. No fingers in even... the mouth. I mean, and she, Emily was like, she came up to me multiple times. It was like, I'll just wash my hands. We're good. I just wash my hands. Like, she was so concerned about her fingers being dirty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. Yeah, totally cool. And yeah, didn't even get a finger in the mouth before uh, the, the collapse happened. Yeah. But and then she after, did great. She popped right up. She popped right she up. She had and then jokes ready we to put go. This, we put the wall up, and then yeah. she puts her head through the wall, and she's like, what did she say? I would call that pain. Yeah. <laughs> she's pretty great. And, you know, and then— It the, was so funny. And then they made a directorial decision to cut, like— Yeah, uh, switch to the next thing. They cause... held up a sign and it, to me off camera, uh-huh. and they were like— Let's move on, and it was the perfect call. Like yeah. the edit, like she she had that line, and then all of a sudden, we cut to the next thing, uh-huh. and it, it couldn't have ended better. It couldn't. She have. forfeited her whole bit, but it was a this is a much. It was better a better bit. bit. No, no, not Sorry. that. Not that. I mean, you biting her fingers would. Uh, you can still do that. I I, I could still do that later. Yeah, yeah. Her um, and I are friends. I could. <laughs> but I think it was the. That was a highlight, and it was just the perfect amount of of chaos with the right amount of pacing. I've mm-hmm. seen pictures of people um, watching from their homes and having a ball. I've also seen pictures of people at the Alamo Draft houses, and I know that's I, that, so that was cool. a cool little addition for for, for and to, for some people to be able to have that experience. Yeah. So I uh, almost I wish that. I almost wish. Uh, I wasn't in GME just so I could like sneak into one of those screenings at Alamo Draft House and just like bear witness to it. I feel like that would can't have it all, Jenna. I can't. I can't have it all. Sorry, you all had to see me on the Al- <laughs> on the screen at Alamo Draft House. But yeah, you were I think shocked. I was shocked. Yeah, my face as, well, you as soon been. as as soon as I knew she was okay and she made that first joke that like don't worry my boob broke my fall oh she said that yeah she said that and and as soon as i heard that from her i was like okay she's okay and then my big concern was get up stand next to me i will support you <laughs> was all i could think was like come was, come come and let me support you friend that was great yeah <laughs> that was great it was um and then apparently Rhett got sicker he and did I, get sicker. And I have not gotten anything. I have to think if I would have licked that mannequin. I keep calling her a mannequin. Brittany. Brittany. She has a uh, name. I would I would be I'd be sick right now too. So I, I agree. I dodged I dodged the bullet. Mm-hmm. I, I had enough judgment. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm very proud of myself, you know? Yeah, I think you should be. And I and later on in, in the more where like uh, I was pushing Rhett to disclose as much about his sex life as I could, mm-hmm. I was I also had the wherewithal to not 
disclose things that I didn't have uh, permission to disclose because some things don't just involve me. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm i tooting my own horn here. You did good, yeah. That, yeah, I, I kept it together enough to, like, I, we're making a good... We're making a good show, mm-hmm. and if you if you feel like you're ready for the chaos, just again, I I have to think we're gonna uh, do another one because it's it's so much fun and the team is so good at it. But there is a challenge of like, okay, where where do we go from here? They've done a great job year over year of like coming up with different segments and kind of. Ch- changing the emphasis a little bit so i do think there's a creative challenge in where good mythical evening goes because you just don't i don't want to do it just to do it you know and it's not just about us and our chaos it's a combination Mm -hmm. of everything so everything has to kind of line up creatively we got to figure that out yeah so um we'll see about that and then you know rhett got Worse, and it was just a couple of nights later was the Streamy Awards. I know. And so then I was like, now he's leaving me high and dry. <laughs> and I got to, I got a, I, I, we knew that we were presenting. Uh, we were presenting the last award of the night. No, the next to last, because we were up for, we were up for show of the year. Uh, we didn't win this year. We won last year. You know, we've won twice. I think we've been nominated at least six times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nominated a, a lot. Um, and so, so I knew that I was going to have to give the intro. What's it called? You know, the the intro speech, the award presenter. Presenter. I keep I always forget the word presenter. That we were going to present the uh, creator of the year nominees and honestly the way this typically works is uh the day of or the night before that you know with all the stuff that as much as Rhett and I see each other at a certain point he'll just be like this is what this is what I'm thinking this is what I think we should do I have this idea I have this thing like written in my mind and um so this year on the day of I called him. I did ask him how he was doing. He said he had a shitty night. He was like running a fever, not doing great. So it was like there's no chance of him showing up. It just wasn't a good good move there. Yeah. And I was like, well, well, let's talk. Let's do what we do every year, which is you tell me what to say. You know, because I'm I like I I like to revel in this. Like he creates some structure, and then it gives me some space to play. Yeah. Like, because that's how I like to work. I'm, I'm less of the writer planner. I don't like knowing exactly the words that are going to come out of my mouth. I just like to kind of go with it. Mm-hmm. And as a duo, it get, you know, he gives me the space to be able to do that. So I made that joke and uh, to him that's like, tell me what to say. But I had thought of it. I had thought about what I want to say. So I, did, I told him about the whole... Um, just the idea of I'm gonna I'm basically gonna walk out there and act like you're dead, uh, because what you're doing to me tonight, you're dead to me. <laughs> what I told him. Brett McLaughlin was my best friend, <laughs> and he will be missed from this bit because he's the one who would always stop me from saying something stupid. But he's been missing and presumed dead. <laughs> the nominees. Um, you know, he, he, he had a couple of notes. I will give Rhett credit that, like, there was, between me saying that, uh, you know, he's been missing for days and presumed dead, and then I paused and said, the nominees, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of what got a huge laugh. I had another... I had another l- line or two in there. He was like, "What if you t- what if you took that out? What if you just and that really worked." Yeah, the pregnant really pauses worked. you always do are really great. Let's talk and I want to talk about these pregnant pauses I- like <laughs> I can't I honestly I don't think I can take as much credit for these. I mean, the main thing that I knew I had to do was just stay poised. Yeah. You know, it's like so much it's like with dancing. 
it doesn't really matter how what your moves are. It doesn't matter if they're big, if they're small, if they're crazy, if they're good or bad or horrible. As long as you've got the right look on your face. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrote about this in the Book of Mythicality because it's so important. If you've got the right look on your face and it's a, a look of poise, a look of confidence, a look of whatever is happening right now, I am meaning to do. It, that goes so far. So that that was that was that I knew that was my first thing, and then I was like, "All right, I'm gonna keep it short so I can remember what I want to say about him being uh, presumed dead." And then I'm gonna say uh, the nominees for one of the most coveted awards of the night, Creator of the Year, are. And then I so I got that laugh, and then it goes to the package, and I'm in the the video package where they're going through the nominees. I didn't have to say any of the nominees, but as the package is playing, I'm realizing I don't know who the nominees are. I'd never looked because I didn't have to introduce the nominees. The package does that. Mm -hmm. But then I realized whoever wins, I'm going to have to I got I'm going to have to say their name. So I better listen to this package so I'll know how to say the the nominees, the winner's name. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I don't like it when people know who, people know, they're fans of a person. And then I'm up there looking like an idiot who said their name wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be like John Travolta yeah. at the Oscars. Adina Menzel. What, yeah, whatever. This is what's says. going through my yeah. mind. I, I'm, standing on, I'm standing in center stage where I, where I delivered my, my Rhett's Dead bit. I'm looking out at everybody in the audience. I'm like, you know, it's... And this is what I'm thinking. And then the, the uh, production person comes up to me while the package is still playing, and she says, you'll open the envelope, you'll read who the winner is, and I was like, and I'll say their name right, hopefully, if you stop talking to me. I'm trying to watch how to pronounce <laughs> the name. And um, the, the person over here will hand you the statue to then hand to the winner. And then she says, if the... If the winner is not present, you'll need to accept on their behalf. And so then I'm like, oh shit, I had not, this, this had not crossed my mind. So I'd put so much pressure on myself to get my thing that I had already said right. I was like, okay, I'm halfway there. By the way, I also, the pressure wasn't off because I thought we were going to win show of the year and I had a speech prepared because <laughs> Rhett wasn't going to be there. So I was like, damn, I got to have that. Yeah. I got to have some sort of approach to this and not seem like a bumbling idiot like the past two years, that, past two times that we won. I, but the, the honesty of it all, it's wonderful. So but I, yes. I had a lot on my mind, uh -huh. and then she adds this on my plate, and I'm like, oh, no. And then I turn back to the package, and it's Mr. Beast. I'm like, oh, well, he's probably going to win. I do know how to say Mr. Beast. That's good news. And then the, the package is over, and I'm standing there, and I'm opening the thing, and I'm like, if this is Mr. Beast, I gotta. You have to accept on I have his to behalf. Accept on his behalf. So I, I open it up, and it's and it says Mr. Beast. And if you watch, you know, p part of, y you could interpret uh, the way that I said, and the winner of Creator of the Year is Mr. Beast. As I don't, I don't know. It was open to interpretation of like, is he not happy about him winning? Is he? Does he have an opinion about it? And really, it was like I now have to come up with something to say because now I'm accepting this. And then, so I just said the first thing that came to my mind, which I think is what is the first thing on everybody's mind when <laughs> it's the biggest award of the night and they're not there to accept it. And I, so I was just like. If you're going to keep giving him this award, he should probably show up for it. Winner of Creator of the Year is Mr. Beast. <laughs> you know, if you're going to keep giving him awards, he really needs to show up.
And I got a big laugh because yeah. sometimes the biggest laughs come from like somebody just acknowledging the thing. Yeah. It's like, it's just, in, in a sense, it can't be, it, it couldn't be easier. So here I am feeling like, oh, I got to laugh. I passed the test. And then I'm like, but I'm still standing here. <laughs> and of course, from the, from the outward perspective, I, it was just a pregnant pause. Yeah. And then I gave a gesture, and I walked off. And it got another huge laugh because yeah. it was like... The it, gesture, we thought you were going to say something right. else, and then you walk away. It was I thought it was perfect. I was dying laughing when I saw I'm, that. I was going... There was no calculation. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm going completely on instinct, which I guess is what I was describing, that that's my... That's my... That's my zone, right? Yeah. So... I I felt good about it in that sense. What was happening with that pregnant pause was I was trying to figure out what I was going to say next. (laughs) And as I was figuring it out and debating what am I going to say next, I was like, well, I guess I just need to say I'm going to accept it on his behalf. And so as I gestured with the to to accept it on his behalf, it suddenly dawned on me. I don't need to say anything. And then I just walked away. (laughs) It It really... It really worked. It did. It really worked. And then afterward, you know, I did. I was like, it because it wasn't calculated. I'm like, man, it seemed like such a. I took a shot at Mr. Beast, and you know what? He can take it. He's 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 doing very well well for himself. It's all right. Um, I don't know the reasons why he wasn't there. Uh, yeah, I do knows. start to think things like, oh, ugh, I'm getting in uh, my own head. It's like. Uh, the irony is, I mean, my my dude wasn't there, mm-hmm. so <laughs> but I was there. It's so like he, a they were both dead to me, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's how it went down from my perspective. So, but I'll take all the credit for it to be very intentional and um, just perfect comedic timing or something. Absolutely, yes. If if uh, we had won for the show of the year right uh-huh. after that, would you have gone up and then have to like since half of the duo isn't there, then since he didn't show, since Rhett didn't show up for what? We, what we, for the Mr. Beast? I had a, I had a plan. I, ha- did. I did have a plan. I had a speech, <laughs> but I, I I will say Rhett, I had a plan that involved Rhett. Uh huh. And the Rhett's dead bit in my mind was kind of a setup for winning, which is pretty damn presumptuous. And now there's, boys, there's egg on my face because. <laughs> There was more of a payoff to that if we would have won, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah, and spoiler alert, it involved him not being dead. Oh, wow. Yeah, because for the record, even though he's still not here and is missing and presumed dead still, uh, I don't believe he is. Yeah. I believe he's on the mend, but he's not, but he's not coming in yet. Let's promote this... Uh, you, don't, you don't have to put it on. It's too hot in here. It's too hot, but I, it is so soft. Um, we're, we're, we, we made this Mythical Society blanket hoodie. It is the coziest thing you can ever wear. Ugh, yeah. Uh, it is our quarterly collectible item exclusively as a third degree member of the society. So you're not already a member of the, uh, society as third degree. Uh, you got to join quarterly or annual by September 30th in order to qualify for this thing. So go to mythicalsociety.com. You're really putting it on? I changed my mind as soon as I touched it. It's so soft. I know, but, but now that you put it on... I have to wear it the whole time. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I'm, but my, I'm done. You're done. Now that you got it on. Oh, it's really comfy. It was, I'm just it gonna wear it. Took a little it. too long. I'm just gonna wear it for. I'm just gonna wear it. I will. Okay. All right. You can I take just, it off at a certain point, but. Oh, I love it. You can't even see my chair anymore. Yeah, Are my arms in the thing? They're no. They're not. They're not no, in. They're not. <laughs> it's I so, love it so it's much. So, it's, it's so got that, soft. What is this? What is this, fake sheep's wool? I think so, yeah. You know, Sherpa. It's got the softest Sherpa on the inside of it. And then the outside is like... It sells itself. Yeah, it really does. Okay. Um, but yeah. You, it's you're giant not, on me. You're, you're helping. <laughs> Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. Last night, actually, at 2.30 in the morning, I woke up... Wide awake, this never happens to me, and my thoughts were just racing about something that 
I went to sleep worried about. And you know what? It turns out one great way to make your racing thoughts go away is to just go back to sleep. No, is to talk them through. And therapy gives you a great place to do that. Usually you have to wait until it's not like 3 a.m. At least <laughs> that's what I recommend. But therapy is a great place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental peace. And we want therapy to be accessible to as many people as possible. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. Now I took at least a few years of French in high school and I, I all I remember is how to say I eat green beans. Je mange les hericots verts. And that, that's probably not even right or doesn't sound good. So Rosetta Stone is here for me and also for you potentially. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program and it truly immerses you in the language that you wanna learn. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages are offered including French, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, Polish, just to name some of them. It also immerses you in many ways designed for long-term retention with an intuitive process to pick up a language naturally, first with words, then phrases, then sentences, and it's convenient as you can use it on a desktop or an app with audio companion and ability to download lessons offline. It's an amazing value. A lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all language needs in your life. It's a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $179. So don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. Um, in the theme of solo and being, j just being left high and dry without without mm -hmm. companionship or support or um, company. Yeah. I wanna talk about my solo camping trip. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that you have experience with this. That's the other thing besides just keeping me company and on this is I know that you have experience with doing this. So just, just to set up here, uh, it's been a few weeks back now. We had like, it was, Basically, Rhett and I scheduled our summer breaks um, towards the you know towards the end of the summer, and uh, I ended up having like five days where I didn't have anything planned as a part of that, and I just my, the itch to go camping and to do another solo trip just it, that really I, I really started to feel that mm -hmm. so once you go once it's it's nice and the, yeah the solo trips that i've been on i mean the first solo trip i went on was when i went to slab city and i i'm i'm certain i did a whole episode of ear biscuits you can go back and listen to it and mm -hmm. that adventure but that i I actually don't consider that what i now call a solo trip because i was i was interacting with people yes i was I, I rented um, a hollowed out, abandoned RV, a shell of an RV in the middle of the desert where a bunch of people are permanently squatting on public land in, on the other side of the Salton Sea. That's, that's Slab City, so I was on the edge of that. It was, it was, it was quite an adventure, but I, was, I saw like my landlord or whatever you call her, my renter, my Pers my presenter. Yeah, presenter. My RV presenter. Mm -hmm. And um, so it wasn't like, it wasn't camping per se, and it wasn't completely isolated. And it was only, I think, two nights. And then 
I was jealous of Rhett because he was able to, the last time he did solo trips, he was able to do more of a, of a solo trip, and I didn't get to do that for at least for as long, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so I was like, I'm going to take this whole five days, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent that Sprinter van to do my, yes, I do glamping, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Like, I love the fact that I can drive this four-wheel drive Sprinter van. It's got a bed in the back. It's got a shower with a toilet in it. It's got a sink. It's, you can lock yourself in it at night, mm -hmm. which also makes me feel a little more secure. And it's just, and you can bring so much stuff, like all of my creature comforts. Like, it's so, it's very important to me mm -hmm. that like, roughing it is not the part about that I'm interested in. It's the, I, I was interested in the isolation. I was interested in the nature. And also, I, I just love having everything that I want and need for a trip right there. And I don't have to set it up and tear it down if I move pl to, from place to place. I, it's Something about that is extremely comforting and exciting to me. And I, I actually even more fully realized it on the first night. But there were a lot of questions going into it, like five days, at what point when you're alone in the wilderness and potentially not seeing anyone uh, for the whole time or talking to anybody, how crazy am I gonna go? Um, I had asked people, you know, when I tell people that I was planning it, so if you've done a solo trip, at what point did you start to feel kind of wild in the brain? And a number of people told me, like, after day two, uh, more than one person said, that's when I started talking to myself. Now, so what, what's, your, what's your experience with solo trip? I know you've done solo trip. I mean, I know you have yeah. friends. Uh, yes, I do have friends, but yeah, I. Uh, but you like. I like doing stuff on your own. I like doing stuff on my own. Yeah, and I've um I've been single for over five years now, and it was one of those things where I wanted to do all this stuff, and friends were busy, and I didn't have a partner, and I just yeah. said the hell with it. I'm just gonna figure it out on my own. So I just started doing it on my own. Like what types of stuff have you done? Uh, camped. I've I've gone camping. I've but I've never done uh, public land camping like you have, and I haven't been in. I haven't rented like an RV or anything except. I mean, the one time uh, I had to stay in the RV yeah. for the whole video yeah. <laughs> overnight. Yeah. Um, you had to guard the equipment. I had to guard the equipment. Yes, right. It's a very very important job. But so you would you would camp in a tent, but at mm -hmm. campgrounds. Campgrounds, or I use hip camp. Um, yep, which is actually really great because Hip Camp is a lot le is a lot more secluded. It's an app like mm -hmm. it's like Airbnb, but it's for people just um, renting like little little spots that you can camp on 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 their private land. Yes, usually private. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's private their land. land. It's their yeah. so like I've which and you cool. can find really really remote ones there, which I did mm -hmm. a few years ago around like Halloween. I ha I spent like three days. Um, and, like, nobody was there. Like, the woman came and checked up on me and made sure I had enough uh, firewood, and she left some fresh eggs from her chickens and, what? like, a bottle of wine for me. With a what area was this? This, this was, was south. I remember you telling no, me No, this, this was a little north, actually. Um, oh. there, was a, there was a lot of pistachio farms around. Oh, okay. So, yeah, central California. Mm -hmm. Um. It's cool though because it, it it works like Airbnb in that you can review these people. Yeah. So there's some accountability and they want to do a good job, and a lot of places, at least out here, is like if you wanted to stay at a campground, you can't. Like you have to reserve it well in advance. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes if you're trying to like beach camp, so the coveted areas, but Yosemite is over a year in advance, I think. To yeah. the day. Yeah. I do Maybe Leo Carrillo for last minute stuff. A lot of times I can find a they spot there. They keep some there. open. Yeah, they usually keep some open and it's it's a short drive. So if ever I'm just like, I see right. a night. I just need a night in the woods. Yeah. Then I'll. But that's on the beach though. Uh, It's just off the beach. 
You can walk. You can walk to the beach. Yeah, you walk under the um, PCH. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've been to get there. to the beach. There can be a lot of people there. There can it's be. It's really. Mm-hmm. So, like, the hip camp thing is nice because you get that isolation, but you also get some, you get, you have a contact. Yeah. Because you're staying on private land. Mm-hmm. And if, so when campgrounds are taken up, you can usually find a place like that around. And I, I've stayed on one of those in, in the van before, too. It's mm-hmm. like, it can have, like, an RV parking type thing. Because I definitely prefer, and especially for, I, I didn't want to be in a campground. I did like my goal was to subject myself to the experience and the experiment of yeah you know, five days four nights, and I you know I didn't want to travel around a lot. I kind of wanted to stay put and kind of make it this rejuvenative exercise in boredom. I knew I was going to be at a place where I didn't have cell reception, um, and. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I didn't want to see anybody. Mm-hmm. Christy was concerned about safety. Um, she was like, well, you're not, so you're not going to be able to communicate. You don't have your cell phone. I was like, yeah, I, I think that's part of it, is not being able to use my phone. But she wisely encouraged me to get, a, like, a satellite phone. Uh, and I got, I got one called Spot X. And if you get the right one, not a sponsor, they let you, um, it has, like, a BlackBerry type keyboard on it and you can you can text and yeah you can send and receive texts and you can send pre sent pre-written messages at the push of a button um, so you can communicate with numerous people and hear back from them and of course the main thing is that the SOS button which then you know automatically communicates with like search and rescue and mm-hmm. so it's like worst case scenario, you're covered. It's a great thing to have. You got to pay a monthly fee for the for like the connection service, but um, and that it may be thirty dollars. I can't remember. Uh, I wonder if REI. I wonder if REI has like a buyback kind of thing for that because for their it's members. Question. It's a good question. I am a I member. I should like ask, I should have asked them, but I had that, and then I was like. I was so excited about this trip. I was like telling my mom on the phone, and then uh, when I I was driving home from work, telling my mom about I'm going on this trip in a, f- a few days. I'm so excited, and she had some questions about safety, and then you know I answered them. I thought, and I hung up the phone, and then by the time I get home uh, and see Chrissy, she's like, "Your mom called me." And said she was really concerned about you. And I think she was concerned about my safety, but she was also concerned about, like, is everything okay? What, is he running from something? What is this like, choice? Right. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> and I get so, those all the time when I do solo stuff. All I can, the time for I my can, family. Apparently, even though I was just gushing with positivity mm-hmm. and reassurance, my mom has trust issues with me. And, but that's the great thing about Christy is like, she doesn't, apparently when it really matters, she only believes what Christy says. <laughs> okay. You know, she's like, <laughs> are you two okay? It's yeah. like, I could, I could talk about how much I love Christy up and down the wall, but it takes Christy saying that like, oh, we're doing great mm-hmm. for, it to, for, this is, this is my mom issue. Uh, I wasn't trying to get away from my mom, but yeah, there is a kind of a safety thing too, because once you get to a spot and you're isolated. Yeah, and there's no cell service. I've been in a few where it's zero cell service. And how how do you protect yourself? Um, or talk to yourself? I, I talk to myself. Well, the, uh, <laughs> well I go talk, a little let's crazy. Talk, let's talk about the crazy yeah. stuff in a second. Yeah. Just the safety part of it. Like, I know that when you stayed at the medium-sized hole site, uh-huh. I Rhett, had Rhett service. left, you had cell service, uh-huh. but Rhett left his, like, 10-inch Bowie knife. He did. Or I, I, you were asked to keep it. Yeah, yeah. I, that, I, I, I slept with it next to me. Yeah, I mean, sheathed, of course. Like, it was this very large, dangerous knife. But, yeah, I, I slept with it next to me. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so and, and then you... I, I told him I really liked it and wanted uh, wanted one for my birthday, and he he got me a, a really nice knife for my birthday. What? We got we. You I'm sorry. We. He, he remembered that I said that, and then you all got that for me. I'm right. so sorry. It is a very nice was, knife. It was I like a gift it very from much. Me too. Yeah, I like it very much. <laughs> You are, okay, Thank I you. see. Thank yeah, okay. You. It was just from Rhett. Thank you. Fine. <laughs> it was his idea. I mean, you got you guys had the knife moment. You didn't have to use it. No, it I didn't did make not. you feel bad. I mean, it's like the, I will t- I will say this. The first night I was camping, I set up at this spot, and I'll show you uh, a video that I took from there. And then it was as the after the sun went down. Um, I picked this spot very isolated. I used an app called Eye Overlander. This is oh yeah. This is where people find places where you can boondock or it's dispersed camping. You, you're supposed to only stay at places where people have already camped and left no trace except for a fire ring at most. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not starting a fire. I didn't start a fire the whole time I was there. It's actually not allowed right now. Um, but I picked a place based on the couple of reviews in that, app and it's pretty homegrown this app Mm -hmm. but you can really find more isolated places and then people will tell you hey i need you need four-wheel drive to get to this spot got great views no cell service this type of stuff it's it's all in there it's really great so i i found a pretty isolated spot in sequoia national forest on the north side of the the park i wasn't going to stay in the national park i was going to stay in the forest mm-hmm. you can't stay in the park if you're not at a campground there's yeah. no there's no dispersed camping mm-hmm. so i was pretty isolated but then after dark all of a sudden somebody drives up and like 60 yards away they're parking and i'm immediately getting paranoid i'm immediately like okay how's this person going to kill me yep yeah you know mhm um, and I'm like peeking around my van because I was sitting on the, my van was blocking my vision of them, like peeking around. And it's just like a station wagon. And then I see one person get out and like walk up the ridge and kind of, I don't know, pee or try to try to see a view or something. And then he come, he's walking back down, he walks back down and then he just kind of gets in his car. Like no, not setting up no tent, no nothing, like nothing being set up. It's already dark anyway. I said, okay, this this dude's just going to sleep in his car, which I would have felt better if there was a tent being set up. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's just a car pulls up and then it's just a just a guy, you know. Yeah, that's sketchy. Oh man, you know what's? And then I was like, but you know what? He, he could be thinking the same thing about me. If I just if I if I walk over here to the edge of my van and I like I have like really good posture, <laughs> like really. But again, it's poise. It's about the look on your face. He couldn't see my face, but I bet you he could, from the from the glow of my LED lights in my glamper, <laughs> I bet you he could tell that, boy, I wasn't to be messed with. <laughs> so I John Wayne did over there and just kind of put my hands on my hips and just kind of like spread my spread my feet apart a little bit. Um, <laughs> I did not have a knife, but I guess I would have been wielding it at that moment. No. 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 It's, well, because then, then, I, I was then alone. you're really terrifying was, that person. I was, I was paranoid, <laughs> and I was a bit terrified. So yeah. I might would have made that choice if I would have had the knife. I mean, I had a had a steak knife. That works. I don't. He couldn't have seen it from that far. <laughs> and I just kind of stood out there, and I just unapologetically just kind of like surveyed his arrangement. Yeah. From it from sixty yards away. Yeah, and I just thought that's the best I could do. I think that works. You and if he are, saw me, I might would have waved. You are a six foot tall man. I th- that is uh, that is With yeah a steak knife. Uh huh. <laughs> waving at a fellow camper. See, I cannot do that. I try and puff up, and they're like, "Oh, there's a woman camping by herself." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that works. That's all you have to do. It's just like. And this is who I am, and I am here, and I see you, and I acknowledge that you're there. I felt safer because it was on the edge of a national park in a national forest. It wasn't like in like 
Bureau of Land Management land out in the middle of the desert where, like, all of a sudden you got meth heads crawling up to your tires and gnawing on them. Has that happened? In my brain, it has. Oh. <laughs> so I felt a little safer. Okay. Uh, something about the, like, if you're on BLM land in the desert, like, anybody can roll up yeah. to any rock in mm-hmm. order to cause any type of shenanigan. Yeah, I, I haven't stayed on BLM land. Yeah, that, that gets a little shady. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's, if, I mean, I, I do... I don't want to say, I don't want to presume that there's a difference. You tell me, if just, you know, being a woman out there alone, you know, you said you can't puff up as much. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a woman alone um, in the woods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Typically what a lot of solo travels do, especially women, is like the the weapons they carry, which I don't really go into the things that I bring with me um, just for safety. I don't publicly talk about what I bring with me, but what I bring with me is... Stuff that well, this is public, Jenna. Yeah, that's why I'm not saying. Oh, I thought you were about to I'll, say. But I'll say whatever you do bring, you you just bring something that you know actually how to use. You've had training with it, and you feel comfortable using it. Which is why I had nothing more than a dull steak knife. Yes, yeah. That that's the rules that I always say for people. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, just whatever you feel like you need and know how to use. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of times women who go solo camping will bring an extra chair, uh, so that while they're sitting at the campfire, there's a second chair and it's presumed that right. they're staying with someone else and not just by themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the, little tricks. Y- usually those chairs are the type where you can just like gather them up really quickly yeah. and beat someone, oh, beat yeah. the hell out of somebody with it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a two for one. <laughs> two for one. That's a good tip. Mm-hmm. What? Give us some more. <laughs> give us some more safety tips. We should have. We should have talked more in depth before. <laughs> before this. What else? Every time um, I know I'm without cell service because I don't have one of those uh, fancy um, satellite phone things. Um, I can let you borrow mine next time. Sweet. Yes, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I I will send messages, like, I'll let my friends and family know, like, this is where I'm staying specifically. Right. Uh, I'm going to be off-grid for this amount of time. This is when I'll be able to check back in definitively. So if you don't hear from me by this time, maybe a little concern. Yeah. Um. So I did that when I went uh, a couple years ago up to, and I stayed on that person's property. Because mm-hmm. it was very isolated and there wasn't any, uh, like, it was it was a far it was a far, it was a long ways to where her home was, and it was like just desert. And I ended oh. up going on like a long hike up to uh, this mountain that seemed a lot closer, but wasn't. Mm. That that's when you really need the GPS thing. Yeah, when you're actually. Doing some hikes mm-hmm. on your own. I had my Garmin watch at the time, so like I was able to keep track and like north, south. I had the compass on it and everything, and told me elevation, so I was fine. Okay, <laughs> which is why I used hey, that in the Grand Canyon too. I did that at the Grand Canyon too. Let me show you video. First of all, that and you th- went with Jasper. That is the big decision I made. Mm-hmm. I decided to take Jasper. Jasper is Mr. FOMO. He does. He always wants to go wherever I'm going. He, he, he's he, he all. He's always at the door when I'm leaving. Yeah. And I just felt like, is it still a solo trip if you're taking your dog? Yeah. Yes. 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 Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that is another form of defense. <laughs> yeah. And first of all, who who do I need to defend what a solo trip is to anyone? You don't. Which, I'm put a pin in that though. Okay. Because. That's also you gonna defend st- it to me? You don't need to defend it to I'm me. I'm gonna unpack the f- the fact that I think that way. Okay. I had I had I had some epiphanies. That's great. That's what you want. But Jasper was my muse. I mean, just look at these pictures I took. This is our first night. The sun is not going down yet, and I'm just taking pictures of him. He looks so majestic. Because, and you know, I and then I sat down. Ooh, and is that your setup? This is my setup. That's you know? gorgeous. I mean, look at the look at the sunset. So you yeah, you've got, you know, you got the it's 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 hashtag van life. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely You were living love it. it. And then okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play this video for you and just 
just just go with it, okay? Okay. This was this was I didn't know I was I wasn't making this video for ear biscuits. <laughs> but when I set up camp and I sat down in my chair with my dog and my Topo Chico and I was experiencing the sunset, I think well, I I just kind of wanted to memorialize this moment for myself. Yeah. But I, I'm fine with sharing it with you. This view is absolutely amazing. And everything is perfect. I got my Topo Chico, got my buddy. He's looking for chipmunks. And I've got the sun setting right there. Everything's perfect. I got the chair that I went to REI especially to get, and I got the most expensive chair. It's like a hammock chair. This thing reclines back. Everything is perfect. I think that's why I've been looking forward to coming out here. A solo trip because I'm able to simplify things to the point where I can control every aspect of it. And I actually do feel like everything is perfect. Amazing what the what the sunset is doing to the to the mountains over there. It looks a lot brighter in this footage than so it actually was. Fire here they have the, <laughs> it's so pretty. Not making a fire at all. Like the mountains and that sunset is gorgeous. It's like watching a painting unfold. It's yeah. Crazy. And is it funny, like, going out in the wilderness like that, and when you do speak, you s speak so softly because you, like, it's don't so want to disturb the quiet? It was so quiet. And uh, I'm going to stop this video, but I will tell you, there is five more minutes <laughs> of me just holding on. I just filmed the whole sunset. And then that tree I wanted to right there, like, that's straight out of a Bob Ross painting. I'm like, you can't you. tell me. <laughs> and... Yeah, I was. I just wanted to to save this moment yeah. for myself. I think I started talking about acceptance, but that's just for me. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was the best feeling. I mean, and yeah, because it was night one, I did come to that realization that as a perfectionist. Making my world so small so that I could control every aspect of it was something that was extremely rewarding for me. But then realizing that, like, okay, that that is what's happening. I think it's important for me to know that uh, everything is going exactly how I wanted and uh, I can control... Uh, I can control everything, mm -hmm. and that that's what that's why I'm happy right now. I I I think that was an important realization for the rest of the trip to just say, okay, m maybe there's a version of being like not having to control everything, but still being content, you know, still being happy. So I, you know, but I I'm not I'm not explaining away how special that moment was to me. I'm just, I, I was just processing that like, okay, that is part of it. 
Mm-hmm. Like that's part of it for me. That's why that's why I like the van and having every having everything so I can get everything how I want it and having the right chair and yeah. having the right drink and the right, the right dog. Chair is so important. I would have brought I didn't bring Jade, uh just as a side note, I miss Jade terribly. Um because she can't hike. Mm-hmm. And she she wouldn't have enjoyed it. Yeah. But I kind of felt like Jasper has he has his own anxieties, but I, I knew that he would enjoy it and would really want to be there. So I, th- I, I definitely think I made the right choice. And um, he was kind of the, the – he was a huge factor in, I think, me never getting to a point where I actually felt w- w- strange mm-hmm. or like I was going a little nuts because – I was able to like take my energy. It's you know, it's the emotional support dog um, principle, I guess. Yeah. At work, it's like I was able to put energy into him, and I didn't really talk to myself because I was just talking to him, mm-hmm. or I guess doing my ASMR speeches, <laughs> which I, I did a few of those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it turns out that Jasper was like a, a big a big part of my experience, and like, oh, we were so. We were so bonded, and like we were talking about everybody that I was missing back at home, and I love you said we we were talking about <laughs> you, Jasper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think I got a little. <laughs> you might have got a little. Loopy. I might have got a little loopy, <laughs> but I mean, it was so. I mean, except for that other guy pulling up that night, and then I. Here's the thing I didn't mention. Rhett was uh, less than four miles away. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he left a few days before me, but like, and I will say, once I was like, I'm doing this, and he ended up having a window of time before he went back to North Carolina. He was like, I really want to do a solo trip too. We usually plan them at the same time, our mm-hmm. vacation at the same time. But because of how hot it was around California, we we're like looking for elevation to get somewhere yeah. cool, and to but not having to drive so far that we. I mean, Sequoia National Forest ended up kind of being the answer. Mm-hmm. And then he went to the south side, and then I was going to kind of, and then he was going to go up north, and I was going to kind of follow two days later. Yeah. And But then he communicated to me. I was like, let me know about the first spot around Lake Isabella and, like, how, how the weather is. He He had service at one point. He told me, you know, the second place is so much better. The weather's, it's a lot cooler here on the north side, like around Lake Hume or Hume Lake, whatever you call it. So I opted to just go straight up there my first night. I found this camp spot, and I was like, dude, this place is amazing. I ended up communicating with him and just telling him, I'm going. I'm leaving here tomorrow. Are you leaving your spot? He was like, the spot I found is the best camping spot I've ever been at. And so I said, well... If you have one more day here before you leave, I'm going to set up a tent. I brought a tent. I didn't bring an extra chair, but I did bring in a tent that I wasn't going to use. And I set up the tent to to claim the spot for him so that he could experience that sunset the next night. Mm-hmm. And no one would take the spot because it would have been claimed by a tent. And I'm, and I'm driving around in my van, hiking the next morning. I come back. We did like an hour and a half hike to the 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 largest sequoia not within a national forest you can't oh, okay you can't hike with a dog in a national forest no i'm sorry national park national park yeah so we hiked in the national forest and went to like the bull tree which it was amazing uh a lot of them had been logged it was like a bunch of sequoia stumps which is kind of sad but they tell the story of how the forest rejuvenates itself and so there's a lot of sequoias that are now growing there Mm-hmm. But they're all like babies, except for this one that the loggers didn't take. And so we hiked to that. We had an amazing morning, went back to the van. We're driving out, and all of a sudden I see a van identical to mine pulling up. And, of course, it's wrecked. <laughs> and I just bust out laughing because, like, the only person I've seen on my solo trip is Is <laughs> And he, roll, he rolls his window down. I roll my window down, and we're just, like, sitting there just... Fancy meeting you here. And I was like, <laughs> did you find my the spot? And he was like, yeah, I set up my thing so you can take your tent. So, like, I talked to him for, like, 10 minutes. Uh, didn't get into it too much. Uh, 
he has his own stories that he'll tell at some point, I guess. And then, so he went and did the hike that I just did. I went and got my thing. He camped where I camped, and I went to where he camped, which was even better of a spot than this spot. I mean, we like went on this forest road, went up a couple of miles, and then all of a sudden you're overlooking this vat. There's this like huge boulder, and you can. I scrambled up on the boulder, and I, I was able to set up my fancy camp chair. On the boulder? On the boulder, and overlook, and I could see Lake Hume down there. There's like a big uh, camp, like a, some sort of, sort of Christian camp down there. And as the sun, after the sunset, like I could hear like all the campers like singing a song, and like they were, they were on like a, they were like on a PA and stuff, and. So I could like hear like way down there, like hear all this hear all this activity, and then they they kind of went to bed. But like I mean, this is that's the view from that's the view from the boulder. See, oh, that's yeah. the lake. See like how little it is. You could hear them singing from all yes. the way down there. Yes, it's wild. Me and Jasper. That's also very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I did take a picture of me actually cooking something. Yeah. One did night, you do some veggies? Did you do a little stir-fry? I did a little fajita stir-fry. Nice. Every other night, I eat um, potato chips and cereal. <laughs> hey, whatever works. But for for one night, I splurged on some fajitas. Yeah, I like to keep things simple with food when I go to... But, yeah, I don't have a full kitchen you know what, usually. You know I had a hammock. Nice. Like, overlooking this entire valley. You had a whole setup. And it was absolutely... That's a great van you have, perfect. too. It was absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the other thing that I just I relished in was not just being able to perfect everything. I, I think I kind of moved past that, and it was just like embracing the boredom. Mm-hmm. Another piece of it for me that I realized, and I actually talked about it in therapy afterward, because um, it was this concept of like, Nobody's here. Nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. Not that I was doing anything clandestine, but like so much of my life is being watched. I mean, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a performer, you know, um, and so I'm used to being watched. Yeah, and I think I've always been used to being watched because I was I was taught. I was. Raised from a young age to 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 believe that well God is always watching. Yeah. <laughs> God is always there. Mm-hmm. And um, it I wasn't taught like Christy that her dead grandmother was watching. But I still I've always had I've always been watched and like I have this embodiment of that and this like inner critic that it's it's like there's a version of myself in there that is watching the rest of myself and judging it. So you put all that together, and I think that's what, that's why it meant so much to me to be isolated. I mean, it was beautiful, it was quiet, it was rejuvenating, but I did, there were no external expectations. Mm -hmm. I could take a nap, I could take, a second nap. I could take a third nap and not have to, like, the only person I have to justify that to is my inner critic. And in that environment, I think it, he was able to be as quiet as I've ever experienced, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Like, oh, I want to take a hike now. Like, Jasper has some needs, but, like, the main needs that he had was just to be, just to sit in my lap, you know? I mean, he was kind of like, it was, it was, he wasn't a burden at all. Yeah. You know, uh, he got obsessed with the chipmunks the first night. But other than that, it was, yeah, it was just, I, ever since I've been back, I have just been craving it. Just craving this feeling of, uh, I, I guess you, I don't know, I guess you could call it freedom. I don't know. It's yeah. like, for me, it's mm-hmm. like, um, it, 
connecting those dots to why it, it, it felt so good to me, I think helps me get in touch with, okay, this is a way that I can love myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it means a lot that maybe Christy knew even more than I did about it because when I brought up the idea of, hey, I'm going to take five days of my vacation and I'm going to leave you. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the kids. You know, we had a we had a little bit more vacation when I got back, so that helped mitigate it a little bit. Yeah. It was like, um, trust me, by the time I get back and we have the rest of our vacation, you'll be tired of me anyway. It's kind of how I justified it. But she was very encouraging. Yeah, and she's you know? done uh, trips without you as well before. Yeah, she says she doesn't like the idea of, like, being totally solo. Yeah. But, like, for me, it was exactly what I needed, even more so than I realized. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty much never alone. Yeah. You know? It's, um, yeah, it's, uh... But I love it. Yeah, that's how I feel a lot too. I'm I'm pretty much never alone. So like when I have that, yeah, it's this almost like unfurling and like expanding that I, that I kind of feel like in yeah. my body. Like everything just grows out. Like everything starts to grow out of me, and I'm just like ah. Okay. That's how I feel when I am solo. I just feel like larger. Yeah, and when you. Which I think is because and so many women as well, like we've we're taught to be like smaller and and like be mm. a little compact. So like being free and not having people watching as well for me is one of those like I could do like I howled at the moon once. I danced around a fire and howled at the moon on one of my trips, and it was the best. There you go. <laughs> were, were there clothes involved? There there was clothes involved. It was a little chilly. It was I, chilly. I thought I thought that I might go just totally. That's one of the things I said was. I want to be in a place where I can be naked and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, no, like to really be in, to really fully embody nobody's watching mm -hmm. is to be totally nude. Maybe with sandals, depending on the terrain. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, like howling at the moon, like doing a little jig around the fire. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's not get too ceremonially cultish here, but. <laughs> What, I'm what, not in a cult. Yeah, I whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Just you, ex, you expand, and yeah, you're, you're describing being in your body too. Is something yeah. that I'm still learning a lot about. Is like, oh, what do I feel? Where do I feel it? What does that mean for me? And when I'm, when you're out there and you're able to, oh, uh, you say open up or grow. It's like these things really happen when you when you give yourself space. It's, and it, you know, I didn't. I don't feel like I'm too attached to my phone, but not having it as an option was a huge positive. Yeah. Huge part of it. Because mm -hmm. I've definitely been camping before, and once you get in that chair and you've looked at the sunset for a few minutes, then what you're doing is you're pulling out your phone and you're looking yeah. at some you know you're looking at something or you're talking to people or you're like you're satisfying whatever desires you have to maybe connect with somebody who's not there or um you know like i said i i in the video i wished that someone i loved was there with me like my heart started going out to all these people mm -hmm. but that was a great exercise too yeah where it's i mean it's it's such I, I think maybe I'm I'm describing some sort of a practice for me. It's like a I don't know if it's a call it a spiritual practice, call it what call it whatever you will, but like the the impact that it had, I just I'm definitely going to do it sooner versus later again. Yeah, because it's like you were sitting there and you felt this gratitude and love for people and for yourself and yeah if you had your phone with you and doing other things you wouldn't have had that space to think about how wonderful you feel and how how you care about the people around you and yeah having yeah. that moment of like oh i would love to share this with someone isn't the fact that like you somehow don't want to be there anymore it's just right this peace and this love is is you want to give it more, like you want to share it, kind of. Yeah. I mean, there was a couple of moments, like I was, 
I was sitting there that night after we had done the hike, and I had taken this picture of Jasper staring into the forest. No. And um, buddy. But actually, it was. I was. I was like. I'm gonna see if I can make this the the one standing sequoia tree in a national forest disappear, and that's really what I was doing. <laughs> so it's like some you know I can't connect with anybody. I can't use any apps. I can't I can't watch any videos. I did have music downloaded. Yeah, like that's a, of course this big thing for me is like like when it got late at night I would put on the music and I oh I threw a party for myself every night. Yeah. Don't it's great. Don't you get me wrong. It wasn't all about like this I wasn't a Buddhist up there the entire time. <laughs> I was I, yeah. I I was I was having some party time. You dance, it's great when no one's around and you're just oh, dancing and it was singing so much fun. and yeah. But leading up to that there were moments of like can I can I photoshop the tree out? That's what I did. Let me, you photoshopped the tree out. Yeah, see? Oh, my gosh. See, it's the same photo. See, look, I made the tree disappear. You did. <laughs> All right, you're so impressed. It's, I am impressed. It's, 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 it's something that, like, you can circle anything in, like, I just Google. Don't, I don't do any Google of that. Google photos, and I had not either. Yeah. But I was like, oh, you can, you can circle a tree and make it disappear. It's the future, Jenna. I know. I always see the stuff where, this. like, you go places, you circle something, and like, you can remove people from backgrounds and things. But... Yeah, remove your, remove your people that you're cutting out of your life from all of your Google photos. You can do that. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> so that, that's my story. I love it. I'm happy for Any you. Any more cautionary tales of? I can make a rec unless For me? you want, unless you want to give the recommendation. Bring a second camp chair. That's that. Bring is... a second camp chair. Yeah, if if you're by yourself, it's good to bring a second camp chair. Um, bring bright clothing when you're hiking. Uh, Jenna's taking care of you, especially on um someone else's land. I I went on a hike, uh, through these mountains once on someone else's land, and um they warned me that there was a mountain lion, um and I was like, oh okay, I'll I'll just be on on the lookout. And so I was like walking through and uh, I definitely saw tracks of the mountain lion, which was interesting. But then uh, there were gunshots. And um, so I heard like gunshots in the distance, like towards where I was kind of walking. And I was like, the mountain lion had a rifle. I think so. (laughs) I think the mountain lion had a rifle. And I was like, you know what? I don't have on any uh, bright colored clothing Today, I kind of blend in with the scenery, so I think I'm going to end my hike here and walk yeah. back. So, yeah, yeah, don't uh, wear, because you don't know, people just out there with their guns sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, on, 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 on private land. Yeah. On private land, you, it's you, all, you, it's you all, never know. you never know. Um, I'm going to make a wreck. The book that I brought with me um is called The Overstory, which I think Rhett, I think Rhett told me that he had read part of it. Uh, when I went to Big Sur, I went, I saw it in a bookstore and it's got these amazing redwoods on the cover and it's a, it's a novel by Richard Powers and uh, it's award-winning, uh, it was his 12th novel. Uh, this book is about nine Americans whose unique life experiences with trees bring them together to address the destruction of forests. So it's that I'm I'm only about halfway through, but uh, it was it was the perfect book for me there because it it gives you it's 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 the stories of people and it's not just that trees are related or integral to every story, but more than that, the entire, the way that it's presented is almost as if it's in tree time, not in human time. Yeah. So it gives you this overstory, this different vantage point on like how fleeting life is. Because mm-hmm. from a paragraph to paragraph, you might go from a character experiencing a life changing moment to then just, it, it's 20 years later and they're dying. So it's like the forest through the trees kind of thing. Like, All right, there you I go. like I love a good theme book when traveling. 
So that and I was that in sounds, the trees. Yeah, that it sounds was, great. It was, it was it was so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is so good. So now I'm that that's that's my wreck today. The Overstory by Richard Powers. Jenna, thanks for hanging out. Thanks I know. for thanks for bouncing stuff off of thanks me. Thanks for inviting for, me for being a for being a better co-host. Oh, oh whoa! <laughs> people, you know what people are gonna say. Uh, they're going to say... It, I, think it, I think it needs. It might need to stay this way. <laughs> I think they'll say I interrupted less, maybe. Um, but I think uh, that people are going to want Rhett back. I, I love being here. This is wonderful. Well, we got to find him first. We got to find him. Yeah, he's Hopefully still missing. he's living. I All mean, right. he's responding to messages, but is he? But it, is he? Is that him? Let us know about your take on solo trips. Uh... Hashtag Ear Biscuits, or you can call us at one eight 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 Earpod One. See, you actually do listen. I do listen. Look at me. When you're over there. <laughs> Hi, this is Megan from Virginia. My commute recently doubled, and therefore my podcast listening time also doubled. Um, I just listened to the Ear Biscuits episode with Link's dad, and you have turned me into. A Dispatches from Myrtle Beach uh, uh, podcast listener also. They are downloading as I speak. Thank you so much. Have a great week, weekend, all that. Thanks, bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.